All right, man. Welcome to Crow Triple Seven Radio. <clears throat> Pardon my voice, a little bit gruff, but I'll live. Uh, this episode is going to be numbered three twenty two point five. It's a special episode to talk about the annular solar eclipse, which will happen very early in the morning, Thursday the tenth. Um, just a day hence. For most of us, well, let's first cover who can see it. And if you're going to get interested in filming, which is why I'm doing this, I'm going to give all the tips that I can provide. Um, to not only shoot the eclipse, but the second sun. By the way, Venus will be rising where the, just about where the sun did right about the time the eclipse ends. It is reported that the eastern United States, northern Alaska, Canada, and parts of the Caribbean, Europe, and Asia, and northern Africa will all be in a position to see some of the eclipse. Here were eclipse. Where I am in Rhode Island... Um, they're kind of doing it weird. They're not reporting and they're using fractions and things like that to describe it. In Rhode Island, they're saying, I will be able to see 0.795 magnitude. That basically equates to 80% coverage of the sun. So it will be about 80% covered. <clears throat> but here's the thing. This is a prime opportunity to uh, film the sun we don't see. This, this is the big thing. Also, it is a prime opportunity to try to film the node, which I have covered in the past is the actual thing causing the eclipse, as was known by the ancient Vedic astronomers. So, using what we learned from the last full eclipse in August of 2017, I think it was, the main show is not the eclipse if you want to try to locate the second sun or the sun we don't see. The way you can see this is overexpose in other words let too much light in so when you're looking at the eclipse that's the obvious thing let way too much light into the camera because the other things that we would like to see and document are dimmer sometimes they're lost in the flare so not only do you need to overexpose but you need to underexpose so basically what this comes down to is Instead of getting really good pictures for the entirety of the eclipse, you're going to let way too much light in, which will blow out the sun and make it way too bright. But then you can look around. If I had to guess, I'd say up and to the right, but that is just a pure guess. Uh, and look for another object that looks like a miniature version of an eclipsing sun. To do this, you could use stills, but anything shot with a still is limited value uh, because you have to be able to do things like say this isn't lens flare and other things so when you have video you want it as stable as you can but if you find something slightly move the camera so that there is movement panning your camera is panning in the video and this will make it possible to determine whether it's lens flare also for me I think it's 631 the eclipse will be ending I mean this is happening right at dawn by the way you need to look up the information as dawn occurs where I am, slightly north of east, the eclipse will already be underway. It ends at around 631, and right about that time, Venus will be coming up, which should also be filmable because you know where it is. Uh, right, at, right very close to where the sun came up at about 631 or 632, where I am in Rhode Island, Venus will be coming up. Shooting all these things is important. Uh, for one thing, of all the eclipses that have happened recent, I don't think I've seen this reported anywhere. As a matter of fact, when I looked at it a month or two ago, the information had led me to believe that I would barely be in the very edge of the path, almost making it not worth my time. The truth is, where I am, it's an 80% eclipse, roughly 80%. So let's just go over it once again. If you're in view when the sun rises on June 10th, the eclipse will already be underway and you can film. If you And by the way, when it's first rising, when it first starts to rise, there will be a lot less sun glow, which means you might have a good shot at filming things that are dimmer. The higher in the sky it gets, the more it will glow, and you will need to understand how to overexpose your camera and underexpose your camera. Um, the overexposure lets way too much light in, which will blow out the image of the sun and allow you to see things around the sun that are dimmer. Then you do the exact opposite. You underexpose it so there's not enough light. You look all around the vicinity of the sun for other objects. And for those who really want to go the full distance, right about the time the eclipse is ending, right about slightly 
different than where the sun rose, Venus will rise. And you can film Venus in the day if you know where it is a lot of times, although it's not far from the sun. So I wanted to put all this out because where I am, uh, I cannot shoot east and north of east is worse. I would have to go all the way to Cape Cod, uh, which I can't do because of my responsibilities. And I also have to combat a marine layer, which is reported for that day. But there it is. I hope a lot of people will get out and shoot. And by the way, if you get anything, go to crow777radio.com. There is a Second Sun forum with already all kinds of images posted. So this is a big opportunity, and I, ha I can't tell you why nobody's reporting an eclipse. As a matter of fact, there are big news events that are happening on this day. Hint, hint, hint. So that's what I can offer, and I'd like to wish you all a happy, healthy, and higher-minded new era. Cheers. Of knowing. Come.